Hey everyone, it's Dot, and today we're going to be making a very tasty and savory dish. We're going to be making Asian meatballs. Now, before I start making the meatballs, I'm going to make the noodles that are the meatballs are going to go on top of and I'm going to be using just a slow cooked cabbage. Now both recipes actually come from the ketogenic cookbook. I've talked about this cookbook before. It is an excellent cookbook and if you haven't gotten it it's something you might want to add to your stash of books to help you cook ketogenic uh, dishes that are really great tasting. So with that the first thing I'm going to do is I'm using Savoy cabbage and I'm just going to start breaking off the outer leaves and I want because these leaves are usually more protective for the cabbage itself. And I'm using two heads for this dish because I'm making extra of the cabbage and I can use it over a month because I'm going to keep it part of it frozen or frozen in small dishes so I can take out what I need when I need it uh, during this month. And you want to chop off the end and all I'm going to do here now is just slice up my cabbage into thin strips. So I like to do it where I can actually manage the cabbage more effectively. So I'll usually just cut it straight down the middle and then work from the sides in. And I don't want the core as part of it, and there's a bit of the core here. So I'm just gonna go along up until I get towards the core. I'm just making thin slices, just like that. After I sliced my cabbage, I washed everything, and then I let it just drain for a while. I want that excess water off. Now, when I told you to cut your ribbons in thin strips, I thought I'd show you what that looks like. And what I'm talking about is about a quarter of an inch. That's pretty much it, just a quarter inch. Now, what I'm gonna add is some salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt. You can use sea salt if you prefer. It really is up to you. Now, because I'm using two heads of cabbage, I'm doubling the recipe. So what I already did was half of my salt that I used, I put it in for the first cabbage, and all I did, and I'll show you what I did with that, and I'm gonna do it with this one, pour it on top. You don't have to do this. I just like to do this to make sure the salt is all mixed in there. That's pretty much it. Now, you're gonna use bone broth. I'm using beef bone, bo bone broth here. Wow, say that's five times fast. The next thing I'm going to add, coconut oil. And you can use butter if you prefer, or duck fat, or chicken fat, whatever you'd like. And I'm using a dollop there, but I have a surprise. I'm also using butter. So I split my fat in half. Now, gently speaking, you can add it in when it's all melted if you prefer. I just sort of do it like this, and at about, at a certain point, halfway point, I'm going to just stop, take the lid off my slow cooker and stir everything all up to mix everything nice and well. Right now it is ready to go. I'm going to set it to low for about five hours. The cabbage came out amazing. It was tasty. It was delicious. Very happy with it. However, due to circumstances beyond our control, we couldn't do any work on the meatballs. So second day, day later, I should say, and now we're gonna make the meatballs. What I have here, I have two pounds of ground chuck and brisket combined, so, or just regular 80-20 ground beef, whatever you prefer, it's up to you. I'm gonna add in really, really finely minced uh, white button mushrooms, and if you can sort of see what that looks like, how fine they are chopped, that's what you want. And your food processor does that real easily. Next up, I'm using green onions. I've got some ginger here, freshly grated ginger. I'm gonna to toss that right in, and I have this little glob right there and you're probably wondering what is that that's actually garlic that I just basically turned into a paste I used my mortar and pestle to basically bang the heck out of it and it's now all pasty and it'll help spread throughout the entire dish we're going to add two eggs next up is coconut amino and if you don't want to use coconut amino or you don't have it, you can also use tamari. And if you don't know what tamari sauce is, it's basically a soy sauce that is from Japan, but it's thicker than traditional soy sauce, which is from China or the Chinese version of it that we're all used to. And with tamari, basically it's thicker, less sodium, and you want to get it so that it is completely wheat free. Okay, it's raw meat but it really does smell amazing. That ginger is just awesome. Most of us know how to make a meatball, so this is just how I make it. I just break off a piece of meat about yay big. You want it about one to one and a half inches in size, and you just roll it up into a ball, and then you place it on your tray. I'm using a parchment paper because my tray, I got a nice new tray. It's metal, so it's not non-stick, so I'm using parchment paper to help. Now you should be able to get a roughly close to 40 meatballs. I got 35, so I could have gone a little bit smaller, but that's fine. I'm not worried about it. They are ready to go into the oven. I preheated the oven. It's at 400 degrees, and in about 20 minutes, 
these are going to come out and they're going to be absolutely delicious. I just know it. A part of this recipe also includes a sauce that's going to go over the meatballs. It's almost like makes them nice and shiny, almost like a glaze. So what you're going to add is beef broth specifically, coconut amino, coconut oil, leaving a little bit behind. And there's a reason why, and you're going to see in just a few moments. I have green parts of the green onion of the scallions and basically all I'm doing is I, I use the whites in the in the uh, meatball specifically I'm using the greens for the sauce just the way I am I don't know why hey why not minced garlic now we're gonna add some ginger and what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn that on medium heat I'm gonna stir all this together okay I forgot my sweetener and there's a reason why I forgot the sweetener I'm torn on this because the recipe calls for a third of a cup of uh, a powdered sweetener and I'm using powdered swerve. The cookbook I get this from, I love the cookbook, but the recipes when they do call for a sweetener tend to run a little too sweet for me. So I'll have all the details from the cookbook below. You can make up your own mind. I'm not gonna use a third of a cup. Instead, I'm gonna use just two tablespoons instead and sort of hope, fingers crossed, it doesn't come out too sweet. I think. Just going low carb, my taste buds have completely shifted, so I don't like overly sweet things anymore. Okay, I up the flame to about a medium high. It's bubbly, as you can see, I'm taking it off heat. Now what I'm gonna do is I have my gargum. And if you don't know what gargum is, it's if you're um, into baking, it, it's a thickener. It's just, it's, it's a nice little thing to make things cohesive. Now, the recipe calls for this to be sh sh uh, sifted in here. I don't have a sifter. But a trick you can use, because you're making a sauce, is to use oil with this as a way to sort of stop clumping of it. So that's why I saved a little bit of the coconut oil with it. I'm just gonna combine the two here and stir it up a little bit. Because this coconut oil has been over here by the stove that's been heating. So I can just start mixing the two together to form basically a paste is what I'm doing here. So you can see it's all nice and pasty. I wanna make sure no lumps are forming and they're not. Now the heat, it should be hot enough where it'll get absorbed into the dish. It's been 20 minutes, let's take out the meatballs. Okay, for those of you who may have never baked meatballs in the oven, don't freak out. That is just, yes, that's fat leaching out of it, but I'm gonna let these cool a little bit before I actually handle them. And I'm gonna just take off all of that from the meatballs, not to worry. But the good news is my sauce is thickening the way I want. Now, that liquid on top is just the coconut oil on top. Don't worry about that. It's all tasty goodness, but I'm very happy that this has got thick. The question is whether or not it is too sweet for my taste buds. Hmm. All right, meatballs are out. They look awesome. You can see nice little green, all the little ingredients inside. My sauce is nice and thick. And what you're gonna do, what I normally would do is just pour the sauce all over the meatballs and sort of just let them steep in them. But I've got the little sample plate out here with the cabbage. So I'm gonna just take a little bit, sorry for the sound, of the sauce. And I'm gonna drizzle it on the meatballs. Black sesame seeds. And we're gonna sprinkle these, just a little sprinkle on top. Hopefully you can see that because of the color. They look great. I'm gonna take a little bit of the cabbage with the meatball. Just see how this goes together. Two tablespoons of that sweetener was perfect. It is not overly sweet, which is the way I like it. However, if you try this recipe, try it with a third. If your palate goes, runs the sweet, go ahead. If you want to use less than that, just keep in mind, the amount of sweetener you use drives the amount of carbs because you absorb at least half of the sweetener's carbs or, or sugar alcohols. It tastes great. The meatballs, are not they don't feel very heavy. They feel nice and light. There's a, a slight sort of ginger taste them, which I love. The green onions add a little bit of nice crunch to a meatball, which is very strange. Again, you know, no breadcrumbs, so, but this is awesome. The cabbage tastes great. I told you I sampled it yesterday. It tastes wonderful. Whether or not cabbage is the best dish with this, it works for me, it's great, depends on you. Um, broccoli might work really nice, snow peas might work really well. It just depends what you really like. But this 
really tastes really nice together. I really do like it. So I hope you go ahead and give this a try. If you like everything, hit the like button below to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also share with your friends. And until next time, hopefully we won't have any issues stopping our cooking uh, like we did with this dish. But nonetheless, it is awesome. And I'll see you next time.